Hey guys, what's up? Brent Calmer from Blue Water VST. Thanks for joining me for this video. This is a big one. This is Twisted Tools Ultra Loop, a remixing sampler that allows you to generate an infinity of loops using this very slick visual workflow in which you layer loops one on top of another and then basically pluck out the sounds that you want to use. So we load this up and we get it going. We get a sense for the complexity and the richness of the sound. Now in this video, I'm just going to give you a sense for the, the different parts that are at play here and get you going with this. This is an instrument that is extremely deep, but you don't have to have advanced knowledge to really start getting great sounds out of it. So the goal here is just to get you going and get you moving with this, and then you can embark on your own explorations. Uh, right now we're looking at these eight individual loops. And anytime we see these blue boxes, it's indicating that that loop is audible at that particular step. Now, Ultra Loop at its core is a polyphonic noise gate. In other words, the audio is always running behind the scenes. And anytime you put one of these blue boxes down, you're basically opening up a window on that loop at that point in time and letting that audio through. So it's a very fluid way of looking at a sampling and of remixing your samples. Now, having said that, it's easy enough to just change any of these steps simply by clicking on the step that we wish to move to, or clicking on the step that we wish to move and then uh, placing the blue box wherever we want, to, want it to go. So here it doesn't take long to really start dramatically changing the sound. Now there are also a variety of parameters here at the bottom that allow us to uh, basically toggle functionality using this rightmost bar here this FX on section. Now this is used for the uh, FX generator, which is down here. We'll cover this in a second. But it's also used to do things like solo particular tracks. So if I wanted to solo, say this uh, second loop down, I could simply click on solo, and then I would click on this mini cell uh, next to the loop that I wish to solo, and then get this going. And then, of course, we're only hearing that one loop, and we could add additional tracks to solo to that. We can also reverse certain uh, certain loops or pieces of loops. As you hear there, that beginning part is now being reversed and of course we're still soloing that part. So all of these occur concurrently uh, and all of the settings are context specific. So it's a very slick way of looking at this. Let's switch over to a different snapshot. Well, fluid stepper is a good one. And here we see that there are all of these yellow bars above here, and this is indicating that we are now accessing the effect capability of Ultra Loop. Uh, the FX section, just as the solo section, all the rest of these, is accessed simply by clicking on FX on, and then illuminating uh, each of these cells next to the loop that you wish to apply the effect to. So right now the effects are, pro are applied fairly liberally across uh, it looks like six of these loops and the effects themselves are uh, being generated down here and so what you're seeing are steps up top that are being affected loops that are being affected and then a sequence of effects that's being uh, created down here in the FX sequencer and gestures now we'll get back to these uh, but I just want to illustrate right now that anytime you're seeing this yellow you are seeing two pieces of information, the first of which is the step upon which the effect is active and the loop upon which the effect is active. And both of those have to, uh, both of those have to obtain for the effect to actually take place. Again, we'll get back to that in a second. But just so you know, that's what the yellow is all about. But now let's come down here to the track sequencer because this is one where one of the really interesting uh, grid-based workflow parts of, of Ultra Loop emerges. If we reset this snapshot, we get this going. We see that we have these different cells in here. And each of these potentially has its own sequence. Now right now if I click and drag, you see that as I do that, this field indicates which slot I'm talking about. This one in the middle is the zero slot. And then we begin uh, at lower left from 1 to 16 moving up. And any of these, all of them can have uh, their own sequences. And so right now we're looking at sequence zero. 
But if I come down here to my push pin mode, and this will allow me to select any of these other slots and remain there without uh, snapping back to the original, which is the default behavior, I can come into, say, slot one, as indicated by this field, and I could start changing things. So I could, say, put some hits down here, just spread some hits around and get some interesting textures there, and then get this going. Totally different sound, but now as I move back to zero, I'm back to my original sound. And again, you'd want to be in push pin mode, or pin mode, it's called, uh, to remain on the slot that you have selected uh, and programmed a sequence in for. So you can imagine the possibilities here. You could you could build up a beat in a very straightforward manner simply by you know building up your bare bones groove here on one, uh, starting to add things on two, three, four, and pretty soon you're off to the races with a completely different uh, kind of build up than perhaps you'd anticipated when you first started working with the loop. Now another thing that's interesting here is that we have this play functionality that allows us to move between any of these sequences uh, at a global level and also at the level of the individual sequencer and FX controls uh, and the uh, start and length positions as well as the loops. This is really interesting functionality because it allows us to kind of sequence the sequencer. Uh, and some of these snapshots use this to great effect. You, hear, you see here in gestures, this is moving around indicating that different FX gestures are being activated at particular times. Now anytime you wish to see exactly what's going on with all of these, you can click this global play button. And that will begin the sequencer for all of these. But let's go back to our normal mode. Let's go back to our kind of uh, static mode to take a look at this FX sequencer part. Now this is the part w that we referred to earlier. This is what we're looking at with the FX sequencer here at top. We see these yellow bars that are indicating the steps on which the effect is active. We see the, uh, these mini cells activated to indicate the loops upon which the effect is being applied. And then we have these two functions down here, FX sequencer and FX gestures. Now the FX sequencer, just as the track sequencer, allows us to move between different sequences of effect activation, I should say. Uh, right now, all of these steps are active, but we could come down to one and start taking out the effect, say for all but a few of these steps, and then just as with our track sequencer, we would move between those different settings for effects. Now right now you're asking yourself, well, what are the effects? And this is where we get into effect gestures. This is a, a really interesting part of this ensemble. There are effect gestures which are basically effect fills that happen behind the scenes that you can generate uh, randomly and just create new effects on the fly simply by clicking this generate button. But as with everything else, each of these slots is potentially its own effect. And so if we uh, really get this going, let's, let's move all of these uh, loop one hits up so they're continuous. And then I'm going to solo loop one, get this going, and we will enter pin mode for FX gestures and start to listen to this, making sure that FX are on, and they are. And as, as we move through some of these different slots, we start to hear the effect being applied. Now with tonal sounds, it will be a bit different than with drum sounds. So for example, if we soloed a different track to work with, let's solo, uh, let's solo the last loop. Making sure effects are on. That one's nice. That one has kind of a stutter repeat. Speaking of stutter, this is in some ways like stutter edit. It uses effects gestures, but these gestures occur behind the scenes. We don't see exactly uh, what they comprise, but that is uh, an element that is uh, in favor of the kind of uh, 
visual simplicity of the ensemble in order to keep things kind of simple and focused on the music uh, you have the have the effects go on behind the scenes and then we can work our magic above board so some of these are quite involved and when you get them going at the level of an entire uh, snapshot you start to get really interesting results you can see here it's moving through the sequence of these four slots very interesting stuff. Now if we stopped the sequencer, if we stopped the gesture sequencer, we could do what we were doing before and just move this around. <laughs> and again, the, the effect in this case will be active for these steps that are illuminated in yellow and for these loops that have the yellow lamp on. So this is all very interesting, but there is a further twist, which is that for each of these snapshots, there are multiple scenes. And each of these scenes is kind of like a mini snapshot. So as if it weren't enough that you can sequence uh, the track, the effects, uh, the effect gestures, and so on, these individual scenes allow us to do kind of a theme and variations on the original snapshot. So in the case of this one, Nano Manipulator, I can move between various scenes, and you see that the sequence changes as I do that. You can use all of these uh, copy and paste functions, and of course you can control the scenes uh, via MIDI using this MIDI in plays toggle. When it's set to scenes, you will be controlling it with, you'll be controlling the scenes via MIDI. And when you set it to slots, you can control uh, any of these or all of these uh, separate parameters using MIDI in. In other words, you could control the slot to which your track sequencer will go, FX sequencer. You would simply set this to MIDI in plays slots, uh, activate this keyboard icon, and then set the root note to your preference. So that is yet another twist on this kind of generator of loops. But now you're wondering, well, where are these sounds actually coming from? This is, in fact, a sample map-based ensemble. So if we come up here to the sample map, we can click on this and, act and enter the sample map editor and actually audition the individual samples that we're talking about. Now, in the case of the factory uh, sample bank, these are snapshots from Enigmatic Recordings, or Enigmatic, the Enigmatic label, which is a fantastic label. Uh, a lot of their, or many of their artists have contributed samples to this. You will see their names next to the, uh, the sample that they have created. I encourage you to go and check out their music. I was really blown away when I heard their stuff. Uh, Enigmatic, uh, last letter is a K, enigmatic.com. And these guys are just fantastic. But this is the sample map that it ships with. Uh, it also includes a sample map from Loopmasters as well as one from Sounds of Revolution. Uh, and those are those ship with uh, Ultra Loop as well. So this thing comes fully loaded. But let's get back to business here because I want to show you something about the sampler itself. Uh, if you're familiar with S-Layer, you are familiar with these sliders that allow us to select a particular sample for a particular layer. In this case, it functions in a similar way. So if we wanted to adjust the sample or the loop that is being used in the topmost uh, in the topmost slot, we would simply move this slider to select uh, numerically or just move it to a position of your choosing a different sample. So let's solo one of these and hear this. And now as I move through the sample map, you see that the the sample I've selected then is reflected here. And I can put on a few more hits here to get the full, full picture. That's a nice one. Now, the range sliders below are very handy because they allow you to set the range, the minimum and the maximum of the sample map. Now, in this case, this is a fully loaded map, 128 samples. In other words, it uses the entire range. But if you're using your own samples or just other samples, uh, in a smaller map, you may wish to draw down this range to say, you know, 30 samples, or you could draw the uh, the seal or the minimum up to a different range, and then you could move within that, moving these sliders and always uh, always finding samples within any of your movements. 
let's now let's reset the snapshot because I want to show you something that's quite cool about this. Now, just as with the slots in uh, the track sequencer, FX sequencer, and FX gestures, the loops functionality allows you to program different loop slider configurations for each slot. Uh, so what do I mean by that? Well, you can toggle between a loop and a slot view here uh, by using this stack icon. When it, when it is illuminated, you're on slider view. When you switch it over to slot view, you can see the sliders behind here and see their, their positions, which is a good kind of visual feedback thing. But now if I wanted to go into pin mode and, and say move down to slot 1, I could come in here and completely change, come up to my sliders and completely change the uh, samples that I'm using. And then if I go back to my slot view, I see that indeed the samples and the sliders are now changed. But if I move back to slot one or to slot zero, excuse me, I'm back to the original uh, collection of samples. So in practice, it sounds like this. So pretty wild stuff. And each of these 17 slots can have its own sample. So you could be moving between completely different sounds uh, using the uh, sequencer to sequence the movement uh, among these slots. You could use MIDI. Uh, and it's pretty mind-blowing to think that you can just move between essentially different libraries of samples on the fly. Now, start and length basically uh, do what they say they would do. Uh, they adjust the start and the length of the loops. And the rest of these functions are, are well explained in the manual. But I just want to leave you with something, which is that you are not limited to the, uh, to the sample maps that come with uh, Ultraloop. There are additional sample maps that are soon to be available from Chris Carter, from Dusty Fungus, uh, and from Cybeg. And you can be sure that all of these are going to be just absolutely filled to the brim with fantastic sounds and really cutting edge stuff. So I hope I haven't blown your mind too much with this. It is a mind-blowing ensemble, and this is really a deeply musical instrument. You just need to find your way of using it. And I hope you will have this kind of change the way you look at samples and loops as it has for me. Uh, and until next time, take care. See ya.